researching cultural background. This podcast is at the intermediate level. It requires a basic knowledge of Accordance Bible software, but no knowledge of Hebrew or of Greek. When I was in graduate school, my professor observed that identifying cultural background issues was often the hardest part of exegesis. Not too much later, Craig Keener recognized that problem for what it was, a golden opportunity for a new kind of commentary, a cultural background commentary. Thanks to Dr. Keener's hard work and the work of others like him, today we are blessed with a wealth of cultural background resources. The Bible is so familiar to us, we often forget it was written in a vastly different time and culture. What cultural differences, you ask? The Bible was written two to 4,000 years ago in ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, and Koine Greek to people living halfway around the world in the cultures of the ancient Near East, Hellenism, and the Roman Empire. These people lived in strange climates and locations with unfamiliar flora and fauna, consuming a dissimilar diet and wearing unusual clothing. They had different gender roles and familial practices, kept ethnic customs and traditions unfamiliar to us, and lived in a pre-scientific era with a very low level of technology. Psychology was unknown, medicine primitive, radio, television, even newspapers still far in the future. Their history was different, as was their literature. They even had a different view of time. In the light of all these differences, it's a miracle we can understand the Bible at all. Craig Keener makes a good case for the importance of the Bible's cultural background in his book, The Bible in Context. This free book is included in Accordance 12 starter collection in both Spanish and English. His examples of passages with important background issues, shown here, are especially valuable. Let me encourage you to read them once you've finished watching this podcast. Overview Today, students of the Bible are blessed to have a wealth of resources on its cultural background, something that was not true a generation ago. The best of these are the dedicated cultural background resources, which now include commentaries and study Bibles, background dictionaries, and monographs on various topics. However, we've long had more general resources that may include such background information. These sources include Bible dictionary articles, Old and New Testament introductions, and exegetical commentaries. However, the problem with these other types of resources is that the amount of cultural information varies greatly from author to author and article to article. Some include a great deal, others draw insights into the passage from other areas. Here are the dedicated cultural background resources available in accordance as of September 2018. First up are the commentaries and dictionaries. The first I'll mention is Craig Keener's New Testament background commentary, the first of its kind. First published by IVP in 1993, it was later updated in 2014. IVP's companion Old Testament volume appeared in 2000. They also published two dictionaries on the subject during the period, the Dictionary of Biblical Imagery and the Dictionary of New Testament Background. Not to be outdone, Zondervan released two massive works, the Zondervan Illustrated Bible Background Commentary on the New Testament in 2002 and the Companion Set in 2009. Both are multi-volume works that greatly expand the commentary sections and add photos and illustrations. In 2014, Zondervan also released the Cultural Background Study Bible, making this kind of resource available to non-professionals for the first time. There are also a number of monographs in accordance that deal with various aspects of cultural background. Let me recommend a few of my favorites. The oldest of these are three books by Alfred Edersheim. Sketches of Jewish Social Life, The Life and Times of Jesus the Messiah, and The Temple, Its Ministry and Services. Although his books are pretty old and not well documented, I consider Edersheim a pioneer in this area. Also worthy of mention here is John Walton's The Lost World of Genesis 1 and Everett Ferguson's Backgrounds of Early Christianity. I can also recommend Victor Matthews' Manners and Customs in the Bible. You may also find John Pilch's A Cultural Handbook to the Bible worth considering. Many of these resources are included in Accordance's various bundles and collections. Check your library to see which of them you already own. 
Since this kind of information is distributed among so many different kinds of resources, I'd recommend creating a custom My Group to put them all in, as I have done here. It will make searching them as a group much easier in features like research. My Groups have been around since Accordance 9, but for those of you unfamiliar with them, here's an older podcast on the topic, hosted by a much younger Dr. J. Accessing Cultural Background Information Once we've bought resources with cultural background information, how can we access them efficiently? There are three Accordance features that can help us greatly with this. The first is the Info pane, where we can check both commentaries and study Bibles for cultural background resources. We can also click on a topic to open a Bible dictionary on the subject. Both of these methods are quick and easy, often sufficient to provide good insights. We can perform a deeper search with the second feature, Live Click, where we can click a word in an English Bible and search for it in Bible dictionaries or another folder of our choice. The third feature is Research, Accordance's most exhaustive search. We can use it to search for a word in any folder, including all tools. Still not enough information? Search for the verse reference in all tools, which will provide the most complete list of all resources that address the verse. We can then sort through them at our leisure. The Info pane is a quick and easy way to access resources relevant to our verse. The best way to make sure our cultural background resources appear in the Info pane is to move them to the top of their library folders, Commentaries, and Study Bibles. Remember, the Info pane only displays resources when they address the verse at the top of the pane. If they appear, they have something to say. Clicking one of these resources will open it in a parallel pane, Clicking another will open it in the same pane, recycling it. We can rapidly cycle through our resources this way, harvesting information that helps us to read the passage more like the original readers did. The other way to use the info pane to access background information is to click on a topic that looks promising. That action opens a Bible dictionary article on the subject. These articles were once the best way to find cultural information in the days before resources dedicated to this area. After we skim the article, we can choose to switch to another Bible dictionary using the drop-down menu. We can also click on another word that looks promising. A single article or two is often enough to give us important insights into the background of a passage. Note that some Bible dictionaries are better than others in this area. In the New Testament, I particularly recommend IVP's Dictionary of New Testament Background. The second feature we can use is Live Click. What happens when we click on a word depends upon our live click settings. To access cultural background information, we'd certainly want to use an English word and look it up in our Bible dictionaries, not the key number or an original language word and look it up in lexicons. That's the setting here. However, note that we can set our preferences either way, then switch them by pressing the shift key. We can also specify that live click search a custom My Group instead of Bible dictionaries, Greek lexicons, or Hebrew lexicons. That could be a group of resources that included cultural background resources, as well as select Bible dictionaries and lexicons. Okay, here's the result of a live click with My Preferences. If we're looking for background information, we're probably going to be more interested in the center pane, the dictionary results, than all the different places where the word appears in the Bible. We can then repeat that process with other words, in which case Accordance will recycle the panes, or add the word in the search box and limit the search to those places where both words appear. The third feature we can use is Research. It's the most exhaustive search in Accordance, as it searches every relevant field in the selected folder, even if that is every resource in our library. In this case, if we've already used Live Click and not found enough information, research is the way to go. I find it easiest to right-click on a word in the text, choose Research, then the folder I want to search. Let's go right to All Tools. There's plenty of information here, as this method doesn't just find articles on trees, but every article in which the word tree appears. It will help a bit if we set the display to show excerpts and sort by importance. The former gives us just a snippet of text to evaluate the article. 
The second places articles with the word in the title or entry field first, then articles that only mention the word in passing later. The combination is a big time saver. Again, if we don't find enough information, we can use research to investigate other words in the text. If there are simply too many articles, we can add one or more of these words to the search field to limit the search results to a more manageable number. The last technique I'll recommend is right-clicking on the verse reference and choosing Research All Tools. With this technique, Accordance will search this verse reference in every tool we own. If our Accordance libraries are large, that could be thousands of hits. The search doesn't just look for cultural background information either. It searches for any mention of the verse in any kind of source. It's really useful if we suspect something is going on in the verse we don't understand, but we don't know just what. Still, if all else fails, this will give us plenty of information to process. Before we go quite this far, let me suggest searching instead for the verse reference in several smaller categories, like maybe dictionaries, or better yet, our custom cultural background my group. Either is likely to have a much better wheat to chaff ratio. Still, sometimes it's nice to be able to see every hit at once. Cultural background information is essential to understand many Bible passages. Thanks to the resources and techniques in Accordance Bible software, we can access such resources today quickly and easily. If you don't have a resource or two in this category already, let me encourage you to pick one up. This has been Dr. J in Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp.